Hi and welcome again to this series of videos on structural dynamics. This video is dedicated to turbulent wind excitation. So as a reminder the wind has two components, a constant component and a turbulent component and so the forces can be decomposed into two parts. One that is due to this constant velocity, a constant force, and one that oscillates with time. So this is the turbulence, and this is the part of the force that we will be dealing with in this video. I remind you that constant flow brings constant force, can lead to uh, dynamic effects such as uh, vortex-induced vibration, self-excited vibration, so instabilities in the form of galloping, divergence, flutter, and here we are dealing with the turbulent flow, the other part of the wind, which brings a dynamic force, which could bring the structure in resonance. So in order to have an understanding about the forces that will be acting on our structure, the first step is to have a model of the turbulent wind. Now to represent uh, the model of this uh, stochastic wind, we will uh, assume the wind speed to be a stationary Gaussian process and it is characterized by its mean u, which is the constant part of the velocity and is the 1 over t times the integral of the total uh, velocity. Um, we know that the total velocity is the um, constant velocity plus the um, random part, uh, which means that uh, we have to have u which has a zero mean. Now this u also has a standard deviation given by this uh, definition and we also introduce the power spectral density of u, which we will define a bit later as u of f, which is proportional to the Fourier transform, so u tilde is the tr Fourier transform of u, and is a quantity that exists in the frequency domain. Now there is a direct link, which will be demonstrated between this power spectral density and the standard deviation, which is that the standard deviation is the integral of su of f df. Now, first, to explain what is power spectral density, we may introduce energy spectral density. So energy is defined as the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of u of t squared dt, which, using Parseval theorem, is equal in the frequency domain to the integral of the square of the Fourier transform times df. Now, for um, a stationary Gaussian process, this is a process that goes on uh, continuously, this is not bonded, and this is why we introduce uh, something called the power spectral density. So it is the same definition, but it's the limit when the period tends to infinity of 1 over t integral of ut squared. So using Parseval theorem, we know that this is equal, and putting the limit in the integral, we know that this is equal to the integral of the limit of t tends to infinity of 1 over t uh, uh, Fourier transform of u squared df and this part here is going to be called the power spectral density. The unit uh, is uh, a power divided, so the square of the unit of u divided by uh, hertz because we integrate it to get uh, the total power. Now this shows that sigma square, which is the limit when t tends to infinity of 1 over t0 uh, t of u squared t, is equal to the integral of the whole frequency band of su of f df, which means that if you know um, the power spectral density, you know the variance of uh, the wind velocity. Now, if u of t is real, which is the case for wind velocity, the spectrum is uh, symmetrical and we can write this as 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity as su of f df. 
So, what are these wind spectra? One of them is given by the Davenport spectrum. The Davenport spectrum has, is, is uh, defined by its power spectral density, uh, SU of f, which is here given in a non-dimensional form. X is the non-dimensional frequency, it's f times L over U10, where L is the turbulence length scale, is equal to 1200 meters, and U10 is the mean speed at 10 meters. If you rewrite the equation to write SU of F, uh, and we put sigma square on the other side and F on the other side, and replace F by X times U over L, we get this expression of SU of F. So taking, for example, sigma U is 8 meters per second and U10 is 70 meters per second. We find that the power spectral density is given by uh, this uh, curve. We can, from this power spectral density, extract a time domain uh, signal of this wind velocity. So this is a, a random turbulent signal. And we can also, if we know the mean speed, for example, here we have taken the mean speed as u is equal to 20 meters per second at this given height. Remember that at 10 meters we have 70 meters per second, so we are slightly lower than 10 meters. We see that this is the probability density function of the wind, where you clearly see the mean at 20 meters per second and the standard deviation of 8 meters per mm. second. Now let us look at the influence of different parameters on the spectrum. We see in the gray curve the initial spectrum with sigma is 8 meters per second and U10 is equal to 70 meters per second. If we increase the standard deviation at 15 meters per second, we see that the spectrum shifts, shifts uh, upwards. Uh, this is normal because sigma square is the integral of uh, SU. And so if sigma square increases, SU increases as well. Now it's interesting to show also that if we keep the same, same standard deviation but uh, reduce U10, you see that the main frequencies of the wind are decreasing. Uh, if we look at the, the probability density function, we see clearly that, of course, if we uh, don't change the standard deviation, we have the same uh, density function, whatever the uh, reference uh, U10. And if we increase the standard deviation, we see that the histogram is more spread and we have a wider probability density function. So higher uh, standard deviation leads to wider histogram and as seen here, a higher value of SU. Um, it is interesting to note that uh, in 1957 Van der Hoven um, described the whole spectrum of uh, wind um, and at different time scales. So you see that there are time scales related to seasons here. So the time scale is about one year and the period is uh, the frequency is very small. Then you have uh, the synoptic peak, which is around one week. You have day-night cycles, which is around one day. What we are looking at here is in the terminal wind is more around uh, one minute. And this is the type of spectrum we want to describe to study the response of structure uh, due to turbulent wind. Uh, other than the Davenport port spectrum. In the Eurocode there is a spectrum that is quite similar that is given by those equations here where you recognize also a non-dimensional uh, frequency uh, but different parameters to represent this uh, wind spectrum. Another important um, parameter to study is the intensity of the turbulence. So the intensity is given by the ratio of uh, the standard deviation by the mean. So here u represents the x direction, v the y direction, and w the z direction. Uh, as we see on the graph, the mean velocities are increasing with high, while the turbulence is getting quite constant with high. So it means that if we look at intensity, well, the intensity will tend to decrease with 
with the, the height and it is given by a function of 1 over ln of z over z0. The model of the turbulent wind will give us an estimate of the wind velocities, but what we need to assess the dynamic response of our structure is forces. Now that we have a model for the wind velocity, we should try to get um, an estimation of the forces. So we already uh, stated that these forces can be given by the expression given here. And in order to uh, compute this coefficient uh, CD, we usually will use a quasi-steady aerolistic model and it will give us the force as a function of time. Now, in order to compute the total force applied to uh, a structure, we have to understand the concept of aerodynamic admittance. And this simple example shows here that if you have a, a small object, the pressures are more likely to be in phase, so the total force is high, whereas if you have a bigger object, those forces will not always be in phase, leading to a reduced total force. And this is um, represented by a coefficient called the admittance. This aerodynamic admittance is a function of the frequency and will decrease with the frequency of the turbulence. Vickery's law is giving this admittance as a function of a non-dimensional frequency. Uh, so this is a very similar to what we saw with the turbulence model, but here the non-dimensional frequency uh, is a function of the frequency of the area uh, of the object on, wind, on which the wind is blowing and the mean uh, wind velocity. So physically we understand that the admittance will decrease when the, the size of the building is large, when the frequency of the turbulence is large and admittance will increase with the mean wind velocity. So if we summarize the uh, wind profile, velocity profile is given by a constant term plus uh, a turbulent one. In order to compute the response to wind we have to uh, rely on a certain uh, def description of the wind by uh, a power spectral density like the Davenport or other models. We also have to rely on the admittance to take into account uh, the size effect uh, with respect to the turbulence and when we have all that we can then go to a model where we have the force, an equivalent force, dynamic force applied to a vibrating body and compute its response. So turbulent wind is a very complex process. The aim of the video was not to give you an extensive description of uh, this type of excitation to structure, but to show you how it is possible from a model of the wind to go to an estimate of the forces which can then be used to compute the dynamic response of a structure uh, which is subjected to turbulent wind.